All right, so we've been talking about hydraulic fracture models. Uh, we talked about the two kind of analytic models, the, the KGD and the PKM models. And you know, in order for those to be tractable, there's lots of assumptions, right? The PKM model assumes an elliptical, uh, a fixed height and elliptical shape and width. Uh, and then you essentially solve the equation for the width, uh, assuming that you may know something about the length, right? Um, the uh, the KGD model, you solve for length and width, but the width is uniform over the height, right? So um, they're useful in, in different scenarios. The, the PKM model is, is more useful when you have fractures that are much longer than they are high uh, due to the plane strain assumption. Uh, and, the, and the KGD model is more useful when you have fractures that are taller than they are long uh, due to the plane strain assumption in the, in the vertical direction there, okay? So, um, you know, the, the idea would be then, and then, of course, we talked about some fracture mechanics. The last time we met, we talked about this displacement discontinuity method, which is essentially a way uh, of relating the displacement discontinuity that occurs at, you know, at the tip of a fracture to the fracture toughness value. And from that, then, we can decide if, a, if we know the displacement discontinuity, which we can evaluate if somehow we knew the width very, very near the fracture, we could evaluate then what the stress intensity factor is and decide if the fracture is going to run. Okay. And so uh, in an effort to do something the, that's the next step more complicated, if you will, without going to the full kind of 3D geomechanics simulator, um, we're now going to look at planar fracture models. So these are complicated enough now that we can't solve these by hand. You have to use a computer to solve these problems. But they're much faster and much simpler than using you know, full 3D geomechanic models, geomechanical models. And so um, you know, here the assumption is, in the planar model, is that the fracture is planar. And it's going to grow in one direction. Okay? And it's going to grow, which direction is it going to grow in, in terms of its relationship to the principal stresses? in the direction of SH max, or, you know, we, we usually, for some odd reason, we usually say um, perpendicular to SH min. Um, I guess it has to do with, it. it's easier to think about that, you know, you're going to open the fracture against the minimum stress, right? And so, in these models, we're going to assume that the fracture is planar, but we're not, we're going to actually solve the equations to determine the extents of the fracture and the fluid flow in the fracture. And, and we're not going to make any assumptions about the width being uniform we're gonna, or anything like that. We're going to solve for the width. And this is very important because, you know, fractures are narrow channels, right? And fluid flow in a narrow, narrow channel is very, very sensitive to the width of that channel. So, you know, very, very small narrow channels um, can induce, you know, laminar flow that even at, even at very, very high sort of injection rates. The f if, the, if the flow is, if the channels are very narrow, then you, you're going to get, you know, laminar flow and that could, you know, it's, it's easier to solve those equations, but it can also lead to other sort of complications that, when I was a, uh, fluid flow is very sensitive, you know, in small channels, very sensitive to the width. And so getting, getting an accurate, um, you know, uh, an accurate computation of the width is very important because it affects the fluid flow so much. Right. So we're talking about planar 3D, you know, what we'll call, we'll call them planar 3D models because they will be three-dimensional in the sense that they will have width and height and extent, right? It's just there's not going to be any, any deviation from a straight trajectory, right? So the fracture is just going to grow in one direction. So the assumption is that the fracture is planar and oriented perpendicular to ball field.
and then stress. Fracture is defined by its width and shape, width and shape at the periphery. Uh, the width and shape vary with time. At the periphery. Periphery. I'm actually not a good speller. So whenever I encounter a word I, I can't spell, I, I start like this. P E R I. Okay, so. Then the physics we're going to model within this or these sort of equations that, are, that encompass the total model are the width profile in a fracture of known shape and pressure distribution the shape of the fracture and the flow of the fluid in a fracture of known shape and width. So in other words, you know, if we if we assume that the fracture has some shape and some internal pressure distribution now, right? So not just some constant pressure, but the pressure distribution, the pressure field, right? So if this is x and y, then you're going to have some pressure internal to the fracture that's a function of x and y. Right? So it may not be the same everywhere. Then can we compute the width? So if we knew the shape and the width, the shape and the pressure distribution, we need some equation to compute the width. Right? Then and so I'll talk about that in a second. Then the shape of the fracture is determined, of course, if you know the width, we talk about the displacement discontinuity, that's one way to do it, right? If we know the width, and we can evaluate it right at the boundaries, right? we know what the stress intensity factor is along the boundaries. We can compare that to the critical value of stress intensity factor, K1C, and we can determine if the fracture is going to move run, right? Is it going to grow? And if it grows, then we can grow the fracture computationally. Okay. Uh, and then the last one, the flow of the fluid, the known shape and width, so this is just the fluid mechanics, right? So um, conservation of mass, conservation of momentum of the fluid in the fracture. And they're all coupled, right? We have to sort to solve them all together. Because this this has, you know, this equation will have width in it to determine pressure essentially. And this has, you know, width in it, and this determines the shape. 
By the way, the reason I haven't uh, assigned another homework yet, I really was thinking that I think it'd be pretty cool to actually write like one of these planar fracture simulators so that by the end of the class you could grow your own hydraulic fracture and give it in. You know. And so I'm sort of waiting to get through this, but also I'm working it myself on a you know a simple problem to make sure that we can do it. And you know, it may be one of these things where we just I sort of hold your hand through it. We'll we'll work on a component and maybe even do some in class. And we still have and a half weeks, so I think I think that'd be better than giving you some simple homework problem to you know actually do something useful that maybe you can use at the end of class. I don't know, but, but anyway, that that's why I haven't signed anything yet. So.